Friday and welcome back to the shop. Um, for this video I'm going to show a little bit of what I did, unfortunately no machining because it's kind of complicated, what I did for that external threading tool uh, with the large insert. So now I can do 14 TPI or anything without a problem. So that'll be first and then next I'm going to show you where I am with the new rotary table and plates and all that sort of good stuff. So hope you enjoy and see you next Friday. I haven't done a close up with the camera in a long time so I working oh, I should have brought a different a pointer over here. <laughs> this was fun. Um, I guess this was a three-quarter square 1018 uh, machine. I started fly, uh, face milling it, way too many chips, so I just used an end mill, brought it down to my thickness, um, then die cam held the, um, no I screwed it in, that's right, uh, no, what, back up, yeah, no, I stuck it on a five degree, did this face, then I put a gauge pin in here and moved it around until I knew I have had this edge and this edge that's where I'm going to drill the hole, drilled, threaded um, then I screwed yeah while it was on the 5 degree because I need to screw at 5 degrees then screwed it down and used the blue die cam, scratched the outline went in, I think it was a four millimeter end mill drill pro, those, those are beautiful, bang good. Went straight down in, carbide, did it 140 thou, then set up my angle here, I think this was 120 degrees, did that, and then I came back, did this, and then I cleared away the little piece that was left. Now, I deliberately left this longer, because the end is not finished yet, so now I can take this end back until I hit the right spot here for the threading. Um, I am going to end mill the side. I want to take it in a little bit more. Not sure whether I want to just get rid of all this material or not. Because I can, as is, I can clamp it in the, in the holder and I can slide it back as far as I want. I can actually come back like over here. Uh, in any holder, so I unfortunately I had to modify one to use that other tool and I still have to do the bottom because I want to get rid of this rounded corners here I'm surprised the screws poking through but okay so I'm almost there and I'll have a tool just need to do some lapping clean it up make it look pretty like I said a million times, I hate steel because of the shards that can get in you and I did get a number in me from doing this because that end mill just leaves the pointiest, sharpest little pieces possible. So I'm almost there. Well, that's just about it. Get some better light down here. There. A uh, little bit more lapping to do, but break some of these sharp edges, clean them up. But yeah, you can see the hole is right in the right spot. It holds the thing tight. May refine the screw a little bit more. I'm gonna get in there. Get in there, finally. It hold it, it's great. Probably it should hold that other insert even though I wasn't that thrilled with it. I can see how it's going to work. but So this should have zero angle to it, rake, whatever you want to call it. I do have some lapping on the sides to do, which is always difficult to do. I'm pretty happy with it. So now I can get back onto making the uh, gears, pulleys. <laughs> Sorry, I knew I'd say that. Making the pulleys for the um, mini lathe. I did get the reamer. It's eight millimeters plus one thou, so that should give me a half a thou per side. So let's see what happens. This came out pretty nice. This should fit in the holder really well, so. As usual, anything from China, you always have to make it better, work it. <laughs> um, wow. 
So this, when I first bought it, I had put this in there and it fits perfectly. You can, I have to flip it over and hammer it out to get it out. Um, but I put the test indicator on uh, the bottom here and it's off rotated. It's off by 10,000. Sometimes when you jam it in there, it's off by more. Um, I had um, something else in here. I think it was a gauge pin. Checked it and it's the same thing. So it's not tilted. It's perfectly vertical, but the table's off or the hole is off on the table. I haven't actually checked the table to see whether I'm going to do that off camera. But I watched the guy's video because their instructions told me nothing about how to put this together. It's crazy. Um, when I first got this, for some reason, there was a pin pushed in there. I had knocked it out to get it apart, I think, to clean it up. Um, made my own pin. I have the tape because the pin just wants to fall out. I haven't Loctited it in there yet. Um, this guy, I guess, I know you can't see anything here. I pull it out, but... Um, this guy here, it had a giant nasty washer. I put a brass washer in there and it moves a lot nicer. The collar that's in there was way off. You stick it in there and it falls on the floor. Oh, it's not all the way in now. Yeah, that's going to stay put, right? I never realized that. Yeah, it's staying put. You can handle this. Okay, let's put oil on it. So this little wavy kind of washer thing that holds these guys, maybe I can tilt it. Yeah, there's the wavy washer here. <laughs> you can kind of see it, there it is. So, I mean, it just falls out on the floor. Uh, so I had to bend it to get it better, put brass washer underneath here. I need to replace this screw. This is a cheesy screw. So this now works nicely. Um, what else? Watching the guy's video, figured out how to put it all together. This is really sloppy though. I mean, it's just, it's pivoting in, in here. And the inside of this is so nasty. They also had a pin pushed in here, so you couldn't turn this thing. So I'm going, why would you do that? I mean, I can hold it out and just spin it around now, like I'm supposed to. So, uh, I don't know, I have, where is it? Yeah, here's a piece of four inch. I was looking at getting the ER32 plate that goes on there, but I have to make a plate for it. So, uh, I got three, two chucks, I sold one. Why does it look like it's coming out? So I figured, you know, let me just get rid of this, make a plate, bolt it down, that way I can tap it around get rid of the run out on it and make it perfect because ten thousandths I cannot handle that um, read their chart China figured out how it works and for 17 teeth they said you gotta go five revolutions plus five holes wrong four revolutions plus five holes so I had the test indicator on here on dead center on a tooth and you go four and five holes and it's on dead center on the next tooth. and I did about eight holes and it stayed on so I probably should go all the way around to make sure I do have a mark on this one so um, what else to say uh, Arbor is perfect and I made this a long time ago for other gears and no slop nothing in it because I put the test indicator on it doesn't move um, well no I put the test indicator on the gear and tried to move it doesn't move this is the blank I finally finished it off camera um, I used the boring uh, reamer went down it fits on here nice. Is the wrench here? No, I put the wrench away. But it fits perfectly on these, the arbor here. Um, did the broaching on it for the keyway. Came out good. So, blank is ready to go. I just need to get this thing together because it needs like that fraction 
of a degree to do it. This one, I just ignored it and I just went even degrees. And I can look at it and I can see there's some slots that are bigger than others, but I want to make a perfect gear. And the print that I've got says I'm supposed to go deeper by four thousandth than the belt. That's pretty tight. So, and with 10,000 run out, I can't do it. So, I'm probably going to run it to four thou and then see how the belt fits on it. Because it fits on this guy really nice. Does it go all the way down? Probably not. Yeah, no, there's quite a bit of gap in there and stuff. So, um, and by going down less, the gap between the teeth should be tighter and fit this guy. So again, you know, I'm learning curve, I'm trying to figure things out, put it in the print, we'll release the print when I'm done. Okay, so now I've got this guy, i got to make this before I can mount that, before I can do an actual gear. So to speak, rabbit hole after rabbit hole. Um, got this guy, figured out how to get it together. I think I already mentioned what I had to fix. Found some T-nuts that'll work on it. Nice big ones. I need to get some washers. Throw that over there for now. Um, problem is, this thing is so sloppy that uh, this, where is it? There's the handle. <laughs> this and this. It all just wobbles all over. So it's not going to work. So this guy I basically cleaned up the end. The point's okay, kind of needs to go in further. So I'm going to have to adjust for that. I was going to make it at 11.44, but I only have one piece of three quarter left and it's a fortune. So I've turned this. It spins beautifully now. Um, so I've got that done. I was making the four inch plate for this to mount the chuck on and the blade on the horizontal saw popped. Thought I had a spare one, didn't, so it's on order. I get it tomorrow. Can't cut this off till I get that. I could do it by hand, but no. Um, that blade lasted a long time, too. That was great. So I got this, and no sooner than I buy this whole set, guess what? I needed the smallest one to bore this out. And I've got this nice and perfect. It's no rock, no wobble, nothing. So I gotta cut it off, turn it around, bore it out differently because this actually, ah, that's the back end of this thing. This is what goes in the knob. So I gotta now turn it around and bore it bigger so that this thing sinks all the way down to a shelf which holds the spring. So, ay ay ay. So once I get this done, I'll have this cleaned up make the plate, put the chuck on it, then I can bang it around so that there's no run out, and then I can finally make the gear. Ay ay ay, ay. fun. But that was cool. I didn't have a time to make the holder for this thing. So I just shoved it in there and said, let me adjust it and get it on center. So he just made it too. That's a teeny hole. That's 330,000. So, let's roll with that, being nice and tight like that. Boy, wow. Yeah, no wobble. Alright, onward and upward to make one motor gear. Problem after problem, challenge after challenge. Just trying to make a simple timing pulley. The old rotary table and spindex that I used to make this with only goes um per one degree at a time even so uh this is going to be fractions of a degree to do it correctly so i have to use my new rotary table that i shared some time ago um figured out how to put this thing together that took a while did a bunch of repairs and fixing to it uh big one was this stupid piece that was in the inside with this groove it had a pin pushed into it so you couldn't turn this so you'd have to pull it out 
go, let go, pull. I mean, come on, that's, I don't know why they did that. So I had knocked the pin out, but it was still just a mess. So I said, fine, take this off. The inside was complete wreck, so I'm using my new boring uh, bars. Can't believe how much I have used those already since I bought them. Clean out the inside and remake this piece. Um, there was slop in it. Didn't pin here, didn't go all the way into the hole. Now there's like no slop, nothing. You can easily just spin it around, drop it in a hole. I love it. Um, I didn't realize my tolerances were so tight making this part that when I put the set screw in, it collapsed this part and froze everything up. You couldn't move anything. So, um, took a drill bit, just kind of made a little pocket for the set screw and it's fine now. So that's done. <laughs> I can make any pulley or gear I want with this table. The next is um, you put the ER32 spindle thing or whatever in here and it's off center. 10 thou, so can't do that. So I went through a lot of trouble making a plate here to go on. Um, and then I'm planning on putting this chuck, but I'm not sure if I want to use the chuck or go ahead and buy one of the ER32 collet uh, chucks that's on my first lathe that you guys have seen. LMS sells it for $89. It's on Amazon for $49. So I'm looking at it thinking, well, this one isn't any higher or lower profile as far as poking out than the ER32 chuck. So I don't know whether I want to use this or the other one. The other one, I'll be able to screw from the top, putting it down. But the basic problem I'm looking at is, okay, I've got this. So now I've got about a half inch per side and I can't tighten the nuts. If I stick this in there, it's gonna hit. So now I'm looking at making my own T-slot nuts and using a cap screw and countersink it down in there so it's flush and then use if i use the other one i can get to the screws on top and tap and get rid of run out if i use this i've got to use the cap screws to be able to tap and get rid of run out so still not sure which way i want to go um, i've got a 10 millimeter hole I've got an arbor. It's in the mill right now. Perfect fit too. You have to get it, work it to get it on. So now I can use the DRO to do whatever holes I want to do. So once this is done, I can finally start recording, making the motor pulley. Yay! <laughs> uh, all right. Well, onward, upward. All right. Decision is made. <laughs> I decided to make my own square um, T-slot nuts to fit these screws. I've got a little dot here where I'm going to put them. But the heads I think are going to look pretty small and weird. Won't know. Because the four, uh, three inch anything is going to cover that up. Right? Where is it going to go? Yeah, pretty much it's going to cover it up. I don't want to go further out towards the edge. So countersink them so they're flush and then I decided to buy the 4 inch ER32 um, collet thing that goes on a lathe but because uh, then I can use the screws on the top to loosen and move it around to get rid of runout. 